Welcome. In front of me is a Lenovo Tab P11, and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So we're going to begin with the most, uh, or my most favorite one, which is the dark mode. And this obviously just turns the device into well, dark mode. Now we do have a toggle for it, a quick one right here. You can simply tap on it and it, this will turn it on. So this does include default apps, as you can see. Uh, so messages, uh, settings, browser, stuff like that will be included. Apps that you download from a Play Store might not. That just really depends on the developer. Uh, now, additionally, you do have an option for the dark mode to be turned on as schedule. So if you prefer to have it, uh, as an example, in the light mode as it was before, uh, for instance, during the daytime and during nighttime in dark mode, uh, here we do have that option. If we go into the display section, should find the dark theme. That's kind of how it's called here. And we do have a schedule. You can see it right now it's set to none, but you can change from one of the two. So there you go. Let's, uh, if you seek something like that, that it switch up, switches automatically, and there is the option for it. Now I'll actually turn it off. I think on the camera it looks better when it's in light mode. Now, anyway, moving on to the next one, it's going to be the gesture and navigation, which simply adds gestures to your device. Uh, so you don't have the buttons at the bottom. You have more screen real estate as well. And to enable this, it's as well in the display section right here where we are in the settings. And let's just look for... Oh, there we go. System navigation. So once you find it, uh, we have a two button navigation. This is the, I believe the old style from like Android 10. Yep, so you can, it's not necessarily gestures because you do have a back button all the time and you have a home button, but you can swipe it up to go to recent. So this is kind of trash, but we do have actual gesture navigations right here. And there we go. Now, for some reason, it still keeps a tiny little bar at the bottom. I'm uh, not sure why. Uh, but anyway, it still works fairly well. So as you can see, you can swipe up on it and this will go home. You can swipe up and hold to go to recent and swipe from the side to go back. And those gestures look really nice. Now, if you're struggling, for instance, with the uh, home gesture where you just swipe up or recent gesture, uh, what I can advise you to do is to start the swipe off of the screen from a bezel, as you can see, onto it. This will ensure that you always get the gesture correctly. Now, anyway, moving on to the next option, it's going to be just a simple split screen, and this allows you to multitask with two different applications. So I'm just going to start off by opening up YouTube, as an example. And from here, I'm going to go into Recent, so swipe up. It's kind of glitching, there we go. Swipe up to Recent, and as you can see, you have the icon for YouTube, so you can hold it. This opens up this panel downwards, and you have split screen option right here. And once you tap on it, it does open it up to the side. Uh, normally, or if you're holding it in a portrait mode, it will flip it over. Let's see if we can actually do it right now. Yep, as you can see, it does flip it over. So from here, you can split screen with some kind of additional application. So there we go. You can split screen with two different ones. We can also resize this if you want to have uh, something taking more space. So yeah. And let's see, then you can go home. Now, whatever application you opened up first and split screen, this application will stay open when you go home, as you can see. So if you want to get rid of it fully, just swipe it completely away. And now moving on to the next option, it's going to be the animation speed. Now, there's two different ways you can go about animation speed or changing it. Uh, I will show you one of those. So. It will be the remove animation option, which is uh, accessible always in the accessibility section in the settings. And from here we can go to remove animations and just enable it and that will get rid of animations. So as you can see, when you open up, open stuff up, when you go into recent, it just kind of pops instantly into position. There is no animations of like zooming in and out. Now there is also another way of doing it through developer options which will allow you to, for instance, shorten the animation by half. Uh, we don't actually have this accessible right here, uh, at least not in accessibility, but like I said, you can enable developer options and find animation speeds in there and change them to 0.5 instead of the default one or off. 
So moving on to the uh, last option, it's going to be Smart Navigation. Now this is a little bit of a weird name of uh, for this functionality. Uh, what it does is basically adds something like a smart sidebar. So, uh, some devices already have it, like Samsung did have it for a while. There's another phone that I recall that does also include this. Now for me it's already enabled, there's this little panel right here, if I can actually get it. Hello, there we go. Don't know how I couldn't get it out. But yeah, as you can see there it is. Uh, so you can customize it, but also it does introduce an option that I didn't actually know till I enabled this that exists here, which is this desktop mode. So as you can see, once you enable it, start on OK, we have a basic desktop mode. As you can see, applications open up in a window. You can resize it a little bit. You can actually grab the edge. There we go. You can move it around. Use it normally. I uh, do have a couple uh, open applications right here, kind of like you would have on a normal, uh, well, semi-normal desktop. So this is uh, very similar to something like Huawei does with their uh, desktop mode or Samsung. Now this will work even better if, for instance, you have a uh, conversion for to go from Type-C to something like an HDMI port, or if your monitor supports Type-C, then this will allow you to, for instance, if you have a mouse, you can plug it in. I do have a dongle not with me though. Uh, initially designed for laptops that just come with the Type-C ports and it does include HDMI and USB ports. Uh, so that would allow you to just simply slap it in here, uh, plug in something like a mouse and keyboard and a monitor and you could just use it as a normal desktop if you have a mouse and a keyboard that you could just use. And this will work fairly well. Now there is a little bit of a wonky part of uh, Android and how it works with the mouse. The mouse isn't necessarily the best. Mouses don't really function the best on Android for some reason, but it still will work if you're determined enough to use it. Now, to go back to the normal mode, anyway, you can just turn it off by tapping on the toggle again. Now, finishing this off, I will actually show you how to enable this panel because it's not visible by default. So, let's go into the settings and all we need to do is go down and we do have a smart navigation setting right here and simply turn this on and that's it. You can also change the opacity of it of this bar on the side as you can see. If you don't want to see it, you can completely remove it if you do want to see it and then turn it up. Now anyway, this would conclude all the tweaks and tricks I wanted to share and if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and thanks for watching.